This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Is nuclear fusion coming a lot sooner than we thought? Last week, Microsoft committed to buying electricity from a U.S. startup called Helion, which is supposed to fire up a nuclear fusion reactor in 2028. And then earlier today, Chinese EV startup NEO announced it's investing in a fusion company also called NEO, though this NEO is spelled with an E, not an I. The company is 50% owned by the provincial government in the Anhui province in eastern China. NEO, the car company, and its investment arm will own 30%. Nuclear fusion could go a long way to slashing carbon emissions. It produces carbon-free electricity with very little radioactivity with a half-life that's measured in milliseconds. Contrast that to nuclear fission, which is what we use today. The waste from it is radioactive for millions of years. Last year, General Motors said it secured the raw materials it needs to hit its goal of producing 1 million EVs in North America by 2025. But Auto Forecast Solutions says GM is going to fall well short of that goal and will likely produce fewer than 600,000 EVs because it won't be able to ramp up battery production in time to meet that target. GM is currently producing batteries in Ohio. Next year, it will open a second plant in Tennessee, and in 2025, it will add a third battery plant in Lansing, Michigan. GM says those three facilities will have the capacity to produce 135 gigawatt hours, enough to build 1.35 million EVs a year. But Auto Forecast says those plants will likely only reach 58 gigawatt hours by 2025, which is enough for 550,000 EVs. Auto Forecast expects GM to produce 76,000 EVs in North America this year and 328,000 in 2024. But even so, GM says it's still committed to its original target. Hyundai and Kia's decision not to install engine immobilizers in millions of older models is going to be a costly one. The automakers are settling a consumer class action lawsuit that will cost them $200 million. The money will go towards owners who had their vehicles stolen and reimburse them for insurance increases related to the thefts. The automakers are also facing a lawsuit from insurance companies who estimate that the thefts could cost them as much as $600 million. The companies were hit with a wave of thefts after videos on social media showed how to easily start the cars without a key since they lacked the immobilizer. Nearly 9 million older Hyundai and Kias do not have the device. The automakers issued a software fix earlier this year, but it won't cover all of the models. And for those it can't update, they'll compensate the owners who buy an anti-theft device. Uh Uh-oh, maybe LFP batteries aren't such a good idea, or even sell-to-pack battery packaging. Sell-to-pack makes it a lot harder to recycle batteries, and LFP isn't nearly as profitable to recycle as batteries with nickel, manganese, or cobalt. Those are some of the things that we learned on yesterday's AutoLine After Hours with David Klineski. He's the CEO of Serba Solutions, a company that's already recycling EV batteries profitably. If you want to get up to speed quickly with what's really going on with battery recycling, I highly recommend that you watch that show. You'll learn more about battery recycling than most other people know now. While Volkswagen is committed to converting its lineup to electric vehicles, it's considering adding a plug-in hybrid in the U.S. to help with the transition. The head of the VW Group in America, Pablo Dutzi, told Automotive News that he's considering bringing at least one PHEV to the American market because the charging network in the U.S. is still lagging. The VW Group already sells one plug-in in the U.S., the Audi Q5e, which is built in Mexico. DC said that he would like to add a similar vehicle to the VW brand's lineup. The Audi features a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine paired with an electric motor and a 17.9 kilowatt-hour battery pack which provides 23 miles of all-electric driving. DC did not say what vehicle could get the plug-in, but Automotive News speculates that it would likely be the Tiguan or Atlas, since crossovers account for 90% of VW sales in the U.S. We want to know what drives your testing. 
OTA, Connected Car, Diagnostics, Remote Testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Yesterday, we reported that Chinese automaker Geely is investing nearly $300 million into Aston Martin. And today we can report that Aston is going to launch eight new models over the next two years. That includes replacements for the DB11, Vantage, and DBS, and the convertible versions of those cars, as well as a new flagship for the brand. And all of those models will be front-engined, but it will also launch a new mid-engine hybrid sports car with Formula One technology. Aston's first EV will debut in 2025, and it will provide more details about it at the end of next month. Chevy squeezed more range out of the commercial or work truck version of the upcoming all-electric Silverado. Engineers were originally targeting at least 400 miles of range, but it revealed the actual EPA estimate is now set at 450 miles. Chevy didn't reveal the battery size, but it's likely the same 200 plus kilowatt hour pack that's in the Hummer EV. The Silverado work truck will be capable of charging at 350 kilowatts, which also suggests it will have the big battery because the Hummer EV is the only current Altium-based EV that has that charging capability. And that's thanks to its two 400-volt battery packs, which bumps the system to 800 volts and allows for that charging speed. This version of the Silverado EV will launch this spring. Another work truck model with 350 miles of range will follow soon after that, but production of the first models for retail customers won't start until the fall. And speaking of new trucks, Toyota officially revealed the new Tacoma, and it shows that fan form that was able to sleuth through Toyota's website earlier this month and possibly get their hands on a picture of the new Tacoma did get the real thing. That exact same picture is used in the official press release. Anyway, now let's get to the good stuff. It's based on the same platform as the Tundra and Sequoia, which Toyota used as an opportunity to tie in some family resemblance. The frame is more rigid than the outgoing truck, which will help with off-road ability and allows for a new coil rear suspension setup for some models that helps with ride and handling. But there's still leaf springs available as well. The suspension has actually been tuned for each grade of the new Tacoma, and buyers can get everything from slightly upgraded TRD tune shocks to Bilstein's to ARB, and all the way up to Fox's three-way adjustable system with remote reservoirs. And there's a sway bar disconnect too. Now let's move to the powertrain. Under the hood is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. In non-hybrid form, the standard output is 228 horsepower, but there's also a version that makes 278 horsepower. These can be paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, but the higher output version also has a six-speed manual option that makes nine less horsepower. The hybrid integrates an electric motor into the eight-speed auto that boosts output to 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. Power can be sent to the rear wheels or all four. Rear drive models feature a limited slip diff and four-wheel drive tacks on a two-speed transfer case. There's also a full-time four-wheel drive system with a center locking diff available as well. And more off-road focus models switch out the auto locking diff for an electronic one. The Tacoma is capable of towing up to 6,500 pounds and max payload now comes in at 1,709 pounds. The interior looks pretty rugged with blocky elements that stack on top of each other to form a layered look. An eight inch screen comes standard but most of the pictures show the new larger 14-inch display. And a couple of other highlights that were kind of hard to work into the rest of the story include optional power outlets in the bed and upgraded four-wheel disc brakes, which can also be upgraded themselves, both front and rear. Non-hybrid versions of the new Tacoma go on sale in the U.S. later this year, while the hybrid arrives early next year. That brings us to the end of this show and the end of this week. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a great weekend.
Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.